Good morning. Uh, happy Wednesday, chemistry folks. Here we go. Uh, today's going to be a little short and then it's a little homework. When we last left off yesterday, we had just gone through Le Chatelet's principle and really how I can stress a system and a, a chemical reaction that's in equilibrium and drive it in one direction or the other, either towards the products or towards the reactants. And so today, like this, I want to go over what would homework look like, possible quiz question type of things um, for the exam next week, for our unit exam next week and stuff. It's relatively straightforward, but you do have to pay attention to the reaction. Um, for example, here, we have four moles of hydrochloric acid, which turns out to be gas, plus a mole of oxygen, also a gas. Um, and that will go into an equilib equilibrium, nice try, where you make water vapor, a gas again, and um, some chlorine, diatomic chlorine, uh, two moles that is also in gaseous form. Uh, you really don't want to be around this because that's poisonous, but it's okay. We're only on paper. And so paying attention to phases and um, paying attention to stoichiometry moles for the pressure stuff. And so one type of question you might get is this, is not asking about the reaction as a whole, is it shifting to reactant side or the product side when you put that stress on it? But what is it doing, say, for, like in this case, what's it doing for the concentration of the chlorine? So that's where you could write, does it increase, does it decrease, does it have, uh, maybe it doesn't have any effect at all. Um, and that kind of thing, if it was a written thing, um, if it was a multiple guess, you know, you might have to pick the one that's right or the one that doesn't fit or whatever. Anyhow, what we're looking for in this question is what's going to happen in the chlorine concentration? Say okay, we're at equilibrium night right now and I've got different changes I'm going to do and how is that going to affect um, the chlorine levels? Are they going to increase or decrease? So let's look at the first one. It says decrease total pressure. And remember from the notes yesterday, pressure and volume are kind of um, um, tied together because as you, you know, if you remember from Boyle's law, increased pressure, decreased volume, decreased pressure, increased volume. So here I'm decreasing the total pressure, which just means the pressure. If the pressure's going down, the volume's going up. And by our rules, if the volume increases, then you want to, the equilibrium will shift to the side that has more moles of gas. So let's look at how many moles of gas we have. On the reactant side, we have four moles of hydrochloric acid gas and one mole of oxygen gas, so that's a five. And over on the product side, we have two moles of water gas and two moles of chlorine gas, that's a four. So the higher moles are here. So if I decrease the total pressure, which increases the volume, it's gonna, the equilibrium will shift to the side where it can get more moles of gas expanding. Well, if it's shifting towards the reactants, then you're gonna lose chlorine. So that's going to be a decrease in the amount of chlorine concentration because your equilibrium shifted towards the reactant side. That's kind of the way you're thinking. So that's why that answer would be decrease. Okay. Let's look at the next example. We increase the concentration of oxygen. All right. So here's my oxygen. I'm going to um, be adding concentration in here. How is that gonna affect things? Well, if I remember from the rules, any addition of concentration shifts the equilibrium away from where I added in the excess stuff because this side then, reactant side would be overloaded, um, more uh, collisions between hydrochloric gas and oxygen, it would make more water and chlorine. And so therefore, how's that gonna affect the chlorine? It's gonna make more, it's gonna increase the chlorine because it's gonna shift the equilibrium over to this product side away from the added in oxygen, okay? Uh, what's our next one? Decrease the volume of the chamber. Again, volume and pressure go hand in hand. So if volume is going down, pressure is going up. And then by our rules, 
if pressure increases and volume goes down, you want to shift to the side with the least moles of gas. So the least amount of gas is, is um, jammed up in there. And as we saw earlier, this four moles of gas is the least amount of moles between these two sides. So it's going to shift to the product side, the water chlorine, which means it's going to increase the amount of chlorine made. Okay. And then the last one is adding a catalyst. Now that one may make you think because we didn't talk about it yesterday and that should be the big clue. You got to think about what does a catalyst do? Well, a catalyst increases the reaction rate and only increases reaction rate. We saw that in reaction rate. Well, what does that have to do with equilibrium? Well, honestly, nothing. You may ask yourself, well, which reaction does it increase, the forward reaction or the uh, reverse reaction? Yes. It's the same reaction going in two directions. So if you have a catalyst lowering activation energy, it doesn't matter the direction, it's going to lower for both. So anytime you see an equilibrium that has a catalyst in it, your answer is no effect because it's going to affect them both equally. It's going to speed up both rates equally, so it's not changing the equilibrium. All right. That's essentially um, what's going to happen. Now, what it will do if I add a catalyst, say I add the, ca the catalyst is in there right away when I start the reactants, it will allow it to get to equilibrium faster than it would without the catalyst, but it's not going to change the equilibrium. Okay? So that's one style. Let's look at another style. And unfortunately, I think my face is in the way. But the problem says, what effect would, oops, giving away the answer. What effect would each of the following changes have on the equilibrium of the reaction? Now, this is just asking about the reaction as a whole. This is, you're going to say, is it going to shift left, right, or no effect? So this is the other type of, instead of asking about one thing in the equation, it's asking about it overall. So here I have this reaction where I have one mole of carbon solid. So one mole of carbon. I have one mole of um, water vapor gas. Um, it is endothermic because the heat, uh, as you see, heat is part of the reactant. So it's endothermic. You need a little energy to get this reaction going. And it produces one mole of carbon monoxide gas and one mole of hydrogen gas. All right. So again, one of the things we want to look at. Now, the question here is just going to be saying shift left or shift towards reactants, shift right or shift toward the product, or no effect at all. Okay. So let's look at our examples. Here we have, again, a decrease in pressure. Remember, think pressure and volume. A decrease in pressure. Pressure goes down, volume goes up. If I have more volume, I want to go to the side that has more moles of gas because that allows more gas to spread out and expand. So now I go back here. Well, the carbon doesn't count because it's not a gas. I'm only looking for gases. So that's out. Um, the heat is just energy. That's out. So on the reactant side, the only thing I have is one mole of water vapor. Okay. When I move then to the product side, I have one mole of carbon monoxide gas plus one mole of hydrogen gas, so that's two moles. So on the product side, I have two moles of gas. Reactant side, I only have one. Decreasing pressure, increased volume, going to the side with more moles of gas, that is gonna shift right. You're gonna make more product, so it's gonna shift towards the product to the right. Okay. How about decreasing volume? Again, decreasing volume, Volume pressure, if volume goes down, pressure goes up. If volume goes down, it wants to go to the side with the least moles of gas because you don't want to compress too much gas in that volume. So in this case, we had two moles of gas over here. We have only one over here. It's going to shift left to get to a new equilibrium because it's going to shift towards the reactants, which has the least moles of gas. Okay. How about removing hydrogen? So here's my hydrogen on the product side. And again, that's a concentration question. So if, remember, if I add concentration, it shifts away to get rid of the excess that I just put in. 
if I remove concentration, it's got to shift towards it to replace what's missing. So if I get rid, if I start pulling away this hydrogen, then it's going to shift the equilibrium towards the hydrogen to replace what's missing. So it's going to shift to the right because it's got to it's got to fill in the missing hydrogen. Okay. Adding solid carbon again. Here is a concentration thing. Here's my carbon. If I add in more, it's overloading that reactant side, that left-hand side, and it needs to get rid of that excess. So it's going to shift the equilibrium to the right to get rid of the excess carbon that I just put in. Or I shouldn't say excess, but the extra. Okay. And then our last one here is the temperature change lowering the temperature. So I'm cooling it down. I'm removing heat. Now remember what we talked about yesterday. Two things we got to know. Is it exothermic or endothermic? This is endothermic. So that just, you know which side the heat's on. And then you treat heat like it were an element, like concentration. So if I'm cooling this down, it means that I'm removing heat. If I'm removing heat, then the reaction will want to shift to replace the heat that's going away. So in this case, it would shift left. So you'd see it would push that you'd have more product um, um, working towards that direction. It would go to the left direction and make more reactant so that it can replace the heat that you're cooling off as you might have the vessel in an ice bath or something. All right. Anyhow, that's really the two big types of questions you see. You're given an equilibrium reaction, and it either just asks you about the reaction overall. Is it shifting, you know, left towards the reactants or right towards the products or maybe not having an effect? Or you, it focuses on one substance in that reaction and says, how is the concentration changing? Is it increasing or decreasing? All right. So you have, um, I have a sheet with, I think it's five. Um, problems on it that are similar to these that just say, you know, and tell you the answer, you know, and ask you to say left or right or increase, decrease, whatever it says. Um, but it's the same setup. Um, so you can complete those and, and um, get those done and get them uploaded. And then um, later on, I'll throw up an answer key so you can check um, how you did. I'm not going to run through everyone. I'll just, uh, I'm going to have you uh, turn it in, complete it, turn it in, get some credit for, for doing the work right or wrong, and then I'll put up a key um, at a later point so you can check and see if you're correct or, you know, um, uh, figure out why am I going to, or come to an office hour and ask. All right, so Thursday and Friday, well, Thursday we have the lab and Friday we have the lab analysis, and then just as a reminder, next week, probably Tuesday, but I'm not set on the absolute schedule yet. We're going to have a unit exam covering reaction rates and equilibrium stuff um, and be done with that. My guess is that's going to happen on Tuesday. Anyhow, there you go. Hopefully that helps. Come back and refer to this if you're working on the homework and get corn fused or drop into an office hour and let me help you. Other than that, um, take care, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you soon.